Hello. Well, what I'm working on right now is this new boss song. So. Basically, it's an extension of the original boss song, but it's got a bridge now and kind of a breakdown. So, um, it's like longer. There's a um, there's a really cool um, tempo switch up where it goes um, to halftime for part of it, so it feels really cool. It extends the song. Um, but anyways, I'm now making this procedural. So basically, um, every one of the bass tracks is gonna have four different notes. Four, you know, the bass track gets rendered three times or four times, um, and then in runtime. The game sends um, a note variables to FMOD, which FMOD then uses to select different, you know, the different track you're at. So um, it all gets combined into a bunch of different master tracks here that em end up making up the whole song. And there's more factors too, like intensity. The uh, the more the closer the boss is to death, the more intense the music gets, and the index too. So the based on the boss's health. Anyways, um, so what I'm doing now is um, taking, I've got this track written, I'm happy with it, I'm loving it, and um, you always gotta make sure you love it before this next part because this is where it's, this track's gonna get huge and um, complicated. So um, what I'm doing now is I'm preparing all of these tracks so that I can duplicate them all 12 times. So for every one of the notes, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, all those, get rendered all separate tracks time so it's basically going to be you know there's 12 different tracks each for each of the notes so there's going to be 48 tracks written here um these all get squished into one two two of those so there's going to be like 20 at least 24 more tracks writ written there and then it all kind of gets stitched together at runtime based on what note is selected and all that so anyways i'm going to go ahead and just shut up and kind of work in Ableton right now to get this track ready to be all rendered. And then once I'm done getting it all ready, then I'm gonna have to shut this video down so that I can actually render it. Cause, uh, cause just recording this video eats up CPU and GPU on me here. So anyways, here we go.
I've got a little script written here in Hammerspoon, which I love. I use this a lot. Hammerspoon basically allows you to code up so many shortcuts. It's really rad. You have to use Lua, but um, it's pretty powerful what it can do. So basically that shortcut basically goes and selects a whole bunch of tracks for me and moves all their notes upward as many notes as I need. So it's just way easier than having to go and manually do all that like freaking mouse and keyboard labor. Just making sure these are all A sharps. I think these are all gonna be good. Yeah. All right. When I'm all done with this, getting these all adjusted, this is, you know, making this A sharp, making this B, making these C, um, then I can go and fold all the notes and e more easily see that they're all correct. So now we're going to do a note offset of two to get it to B. Make sure the config reloads. All right, cool. And the only trick to this is making sure to press the up arrow so that you can use up and down correctly. And the, the script relies on um, being able to press the up. Basically it relies on being able to use keyboard shortcuts to accomplish what it's trying to do here. You can also use menu shortcuts from Hammerspoon. B, cool.
The other huge benefit to creating a, a little script to do repetitive manual labor style tasks like this is that you take out the human error factor. When, when I do this by hand, it's like, oops, I forgot, or oops, I didn't shift that one up enough notes. Oops, I gotta go back and check all those again to make sure I have some peace of mind that it is the correct note that it is. All that, you don't need to worry about any of that stuff. So it ends up taking, you know, 45 minutes or whatever to get a track ready as opposed to an hour and a half. So yeah, once this is all set up, I also have another kind of script that basically renders all this. So what that does, it goes and I have to select all the right tracks to render for that particular note or track, I guess you could call it. Um, but once it's all selected, then I can just go run this script and it goes and exports each one of these sections and names them all correctly. That's another huge time saver.
All right. Let's check that in. Okay, so I'm gonna go and fold all these notes. Just quickly see that they're all, you know, I don't really need to have, um, the only reason I had them open like this is so that I could, because when you, when you got it folded, you can't press the up arrow key to move it up one note, for example. That, what that would do is move it to the next note in the fold, which would, just wouldn't work for that whole process there. All right, and that that applies to like everything. Oh wait, I forget that one. And now you can just I can quickly see that these are all the correct notes. Okay, um, now I'm gonna preview these a little bit. I'm not gonna hear any drums because. As you can see, the drums are tucked down here at the beginning. We're only get, we're going to render these separately, so the drums are going to be their own kind of thing. And the drums get rendered three times, not twelve times, because there's really only three bass notes um, that are needed for all twelve keys, depending on because you only the drums are only B, C, or C sharp basically, and all those three notes would fit into every key. Uh, so that simplifies things. But for the melodies and the bass lines, you want to have all 12. All right. Um, yeah, let's preview these a little bit. Let's see what C sharp sounds like. He's mainly listening to see if it's all in key. That's not too loud. What is that? Oh wow, you are really loud. Is that you? Oh no. Not that. No. Oh here. That is like crazy loud up here. All right, so you are coming out at well negative four, all right? But what's it at a? Whoa! Oh, it's still getting the same volume. It's just that it's so much lower. Okay, so that means that we need to kind of like ceiling it a little lower, I think. Ooh, this is before compression. Oh, we need to add another one of these. Whoa. Crazy. So funny what that uh, that does. See how much this is basically cleaning up this track so much because it's the bass was coming out at negative three dB, which is really loud because I did this limiter before the compression. Now I'm just cleaning it up by adding another limiter afterwards because I don't want to change the character of the original sound really. But what's crazy about limiters is you can really get almost the exact same sound almost out of them. By, but li by limiting the, the overall peaks of your audio. 
But you've really got to be careful because you destroy your dynamic range that way. So you've got to make sure you're not applying it to like the whole track. Just like one, you know, sometimes it works really well for one particular instance like this. Or especially like synths or things that are up in your mid-range and stuff like that. Okay, it's got a really nice grit to it originally. It's like negative 3 dB. Let's see what it's like ceiling to zero. See that? It's still, and now it's negative 6. And it sounds almost exactly the same. Definitely, that is really, really nice ch change there. In fact, we should probably apply that to every single one of these bass notes. Okay, let's hear that again. Back up with the high notes. Wow. Still too bad. adjustment here. Just some um, mastering here. I should definitely go at the end. So this is really necessary to do this right here, but it's it's super epic when you play the when you're playing the game and you're fighting a boss and you got all this crazy you know loud sounds going on the fast drum beat it's super sick. So anyways, um, this is so worth it to just go through here and clean it up a little bit, make sure it masters better. Like this part. What's this now? Oh yeah, this is kind of a sad sound, but it's really cool. It gives you kind of a depth in the bass. You can see how much audio it's put, put, um, pushing out here. Let's do something like a similar kind of limiter. Make sure this doesn't get too loud. This is coming out at negative 12. I already 
did this to the Mel the Roar sounds. They have a nice limiter on them. I think those are going to be okay. Let's hear this. Okay, so the roars are still still a bit dominating everything. They are really cool. They've been turned down just a tiny, tiny bit. Okay, there's a negative 5.3. Let's hear it lower until the whole mix sounds really, really good. Sounds better. It's too far. The, real, the focus here at the very end is basically going to be on these roar sounds, so I want these to be more foreground than the rest. So for a first pass of mastering, that should that should help. Let's see what we got here. The rest of it. Oh, this is without drums. I'm like, why is this not loud enough? drums I love this song so much cool all right um, let's get the rest of the drums fixed now oh, let's check in just saving copies of the song basically only the um, Ableton file to my repo because then I got a little log of it at least if I want to go backwards in time to that part right before I just made that change I got a nice thing, and that's great about the ALS um, Ableton format is it's text-based, so. Okay, so that was playing with note B, and we also need double-time drums. Let's hear, um, yeah, I guess we should probably. Uh, we, don't, we don't really need to move all these together, but okay, we do need some double time drums. So basically, when the game gets all, or when you get super intense and the boss gets close to death, there's twice as many drums playing. In fact, let's let's just kill whatever that track was. Duplicate this one. Call that double. Can we just shift all these the slightest bit. I think to there maybe. So I'm hearing the double the drums sometimes overlap each other and I don't want that. I want to do a little side chain EQ or side chain compressor. So that when whenever this second double up track lines up perfectly with the drums track, this one gets cancelled out, basically. So it'll still sound really cool, but it'll sound cleaner. Uh, let's see, compressor. I chain it to the drums now. Let's...
yeah, so, right, so you, you only hear, I've got this little uh, preview thing checked right here, so basically it's it's previewing what it's side-chaining. So it's side-chained to this, the drum track, so you can see as the cursor goes by the, the single snare note here, it plays that, so we're hearing this now, now when there's no need to EQ the sidechain. I want to do the sidechain on the overall volume. So post effects, yeah. Gain, dry wet. Okay, let's hear that then. When we have that, we want it to... So let's just hear this one first. Is there somewhere? Ah, here's a good place where it overlaps. Okay, and we want, so it's, we're hitting about here, it's for a threshold about there. Let's get a nice ratio going, maybe a little bit of knee. Yeah, short attack window, probably zero, oh, no makeup. Yeah, you, just, you could hear it really side chain really fast right there, so we need a little more attack. release Okay, just make sure that it kind of feels right now. Remember, this only happens in the boss fight when you get close to the boss's death. Things get extra intense, and these this second layer of drums comes in. So that looks that sounds pretty cool. I'm really loving how that is actually. It's pretty awesome. I like it. Okay, so I want to do two more. Um, this is gonna be we got we got the B drums, and we got the C drums and the C sharp drums. So things are gonna get pushed up a note here to fit with different song keys. The key when doing this is to make sure you haven't lost any of the 
drum's power by changing its note. So what do we got here? Okay, we're getting negative 10.6 there. This doesn't even sound any different. What? Did I not change it? This is weird. Oh. Okay, I've just been messing it up here. Let's go backwards in time. Okay, yeah, that's what it was before. The root key was C sharp. Okay, so I already got this set up actually. I've got three different tracks here. So I need to take these notes. Right. Oh, there. Go to B. Yeah, there we go. Cool, that's fine. I think I did this for the other tracks already. I kinda don't even need to move the snare really. Oh man, I forget to do that up here. I'm starting over. I'm lost. Let's get this all where it should be anyway.
there you have it. All right, this track is ready to go. So now I'm gonna go into my process of rendering, which is basically, basically I'm gonna go like brush my teeth and stuff, you know, get get lunch while this thing's exporting. So anyways, um, hope you enjoyed the video. That's it, see ya.